I've got a two-parter for you today. In the first part of this episode, we're going to review a comment that a viewer left recently, and it involves strategy for new players to the game. I thought it was interesting, so I put it in, and let's talk about it. In the second part of this video, I review the recent changes that went uh, live this past week in rewards in the game, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling about it, uh, what I think is going well, and what I think uh, needs to be improved on. If any of this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. Well, it's been quite a while. Uh, we did have my live stream this past weekend and I'll leave a link in uh, the show notes if you haven't watched it. It was pretty wild. Uh, we had a lot of opinions flying back and forth about recent happenings, but I've been off uh, the, the previous week and didn't make any videos. First of all, due to Easter vacation, everything went well. Then I got back, promptly got food poisoning and I was down for a couple more days, but I'm back up and running um, and there's lots to cover. So. In this video, I had a viewer uh, leave a comment on a video from a week or two ago, but I thought it bore uh, talking about because it's a topic that I've covered before, but I thought he put it well. So I want to go ahead and review that. And like I said in the intro, uh, the second part of this, we're going to, or I'm going to take a look at the recent changes and rewards. Everybody's talking about it. Um, and in the second part of the video, uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the recent changes um, and how I feel it's going and what I think uh, is doing well and what could uh, use improved. So let's go ahead and start off with a comment. And I went ahead and made a couple slides. Let's go ahead and draw that up. Okay. And the viewer uh, is named Ixus. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right. But he's talking about strategy. Uh, when you're getting into the game. So let's go over it and I'll comment as we go. I'll just read his words. Um, uh, there's two different slides because he did two different comments. But hi, I've been playing Splinterlands since 2017 and I would like to give you and any newcomers some advice. If your intention is to grow your deck and move up the ranks, I would put a priority on maxing your summoners first while the prices are relatively low. Okay, so we'll go on to that. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I haven't been playing as long as he has, but I have been playing for three years. So uh, when I came in, uh, and he hits this a little bit longer, so I'll put that off a little bit, but I do agree with his point that uh, especially the Chaos Legion summoners now, and overall, s cards in general are down, okay? So let's just face it, okay? Uh, that's one of the things that uh, some people are getting out, you know? Um, but as we know, in crypto or basically anything, especially crypto, is uh, when people are getting out or people are selling off, if you're a firm believer in the project, that's also a good time to be buying in. So there's two different ways you can look at it, right? And it just really depends upon, uh, you know, how you believe in the game, if you, if you want to stay with the game over time. But I have been here. I'm not a new guy. So I don't know if this person uh, is new to the channel or, um, you know, if he hasn't watched any of my videos, but I have talked about this in the past. And especially when I was doing a lot of videos on strategy, one of my main points was buy your summoners first and then base the rest of your deck around that. OK, but his point is valid that the summoners are priced nicely now. I mean, most of these, most of these, we'll take a look here in a little while, but most of these uh, you can get for under a buck, you know, something somewhere around there, you know. So, uh, okay, let's go on. I've seen in several, or I think he, uh, I've seen in several cycles where the card prices will rise drastically, making it almost impossible to max out your cards unless you have a thousand, uh, have thousands of dollars. Your summoners are your most important cards. Whether you can max out your other cards or not is irrelevant. Um, I would talk about that in a minute. It may take you a long time to max your other cards, and it, if you wait until then to max your summoners, the pr uh, prices may be two to four times higher than now. So part of that, it, he does have a valid point, right? So, uh, and he goes into this in, in, in the next page, but I want to point out that when I got in, um, it was too pricey to even think about max. I got in in the middle of the bull run. It was too pricey to even think about maxing out. I had to go with two summoners and bring them up to silver because I was paying, uh, you know, 
six, eight, ten dollars per BCX just for a rare summoner, right? Thinking of Ulrich because that's the first one I went with, right? Because he was very strong back then. Um, but he does have a, a good point um, that at these low prices, if you're just getting in, into the game, you might think about uh, maxing out your summoners first. However, my point here is that not everybody needs maxed out summoners, okay? Now, he says that, uh, let me go back to where he says it, um, whether you can max out your other cards or not is irrelevant. I would say no to that because whenever I was first getting into the game, I knew there was no way possible that I was going to be playing in, in high level diamond or champion league, right? Um, especially champion um, and high level diamond where you would take advantage of uh, the max level summoners, right? Now, uh, we'll talk about this. I am in diamond now, but I don't think that I should be there. I don't know what's going on with the game because I've only got gold level summoners, but I think that's going back to what he was pointing out in my video, thinking I was a newcomer with only gold level summoners. I agree with the idea that when prices are low, might as well max them out, right? Okay, why not? Um, but if you're coming into the game and the prices are, are median or higher, you have to think about your overall amount of money you're going to pay to play the game, uh, your budget, that is, okay? Because to me, there was no point in paying for max level summoners when I knew I was never going to use them, right? Because um, he he looks at it a little bit different than I do, but if you're, if you're not going to put the budget in to pay thousands of dollars to raise the level of the rest of your cards to go along to take advantage of those maxed out summoners, why have maxed out summoners? Okay, so let's go on to the second, uh, the second one here. It's a little bit longer. Uh, building a deck takes time. Summoners value increase during that time. Identify the core summoners you want, uh, ideally one in each element. Good point. <clears throat> and for the most part, except for Chaos Legion, due to the print print numbers, he's right. The the values have went up. Uh, some, not a whole lot. Uh, some of the more um, popular ones, a lot more. Um, I started when Untamed was in full swing. I started at the end of Untamed uh, myself. Um, at the time, those summoners were super cheap. Conversely, when I started at the end of Untamed, Untamed they were super expensive. Okay. I learned pretty quick that as, as the bull run accelerated, all the normal summoners back then, which are pretty overpowered today, were a couple of dollars. They quickly ran up to unobtainium range, which ultimately limited my future growth and earning potential. Okay, uh, I recommend focusing on two to three summoners that will give you most flexibility. Don't run your budget too thin. Focus on your strongest elements and one or two multi-summoners that will give you the most bang for your buck. Agreed. Uh, this is very similar. I said the exact same thing in multiple videos uh, when I was talking about strategy. It's been a while. I got on a land kick. Um, anyway, uh, I, I agree with what he's saying here. And if you're first starting out, aim to max out those and slowly build out your deck. Focus on the core elements. Neutral and Dragon will go the furthest to help your overall deck. Now, um, as far as this statement goes, once again, I go back. If you're talking maxing out your um, Chaos Legion rare summoners, that's one thing. Talking about maxing out other summoners, completely different uh, ballpark because of the costs involved, right? If you're talking about um, maxing out Chaos Legion summoners at this point, probably a no-brainer, right? And we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but uh, as far as the core elements, true. Uh, pick out two or three. Um, and go with what you feel are going to be strongest. If you're going with Chaos Legion, uh, I would go with probably Water and Earth, um, but uh, everyone has their different favorites, right? Um, but once again, if you're talking outside of the Chaos Legion summoners, um, rare summoners, the, the more pricey summoners, my point still stands. You know, if you know you're not going to spend thousands of dollars leveling up the rest of your deck to support those, why spend the money on them, right? Kind of a no-brainer to get the cheap ones, right? But when you start talking uh, 15 20 $25 a BCX, that gets very pricey very fast, right? Okay. Don't get priced out of your deck. I ran into that 
where I spent some time building my main cards for the deck, and after I had it at silver or gold level, it became too hard, too costly to upgrade my summoners, which ultimately limited the growth of my deck until the next collection came out. I hope this helps some of the newcomers, uh, Tysperius. Okay, so once again, shout out to Tysperius. Thank you for, and I'll have to move this over here. Thank you for that comment that this uh, led to a good discussion. I completely agree. However, I do agree that uh, there's still budget involved, okay? Um, like myself, I'm still at level six rare summoners, right? As far as, we'll take a look here. As far as Chaos Legion goes, okay? Um, owned and... I also have some gold foils. Some of my primary ones I play are gold foils, like level six Kelia and uh, level six Obsidian, which I specifically bought because they were used quite often by my bot, right? But I also have some of the other ones. And to his point, uh, I went and I saw how much it would take to max out, uh, you know, my Chaos Legion rare summoners um, to max level. At this point, it would be eighty dollars for me to take all my level six. Uh, standard foils to to max level, right? Do I want to do that? I don't necessarily know because I don't have a huge amount of maxed out cards. I do have some which are primarily the rewards, Chaos, Chaos Legion rewards cards, which were very cheap. Um, but I don't know necessarily if it's enough to make maxing out my summoners worth the money, okay? A lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon. Obviously, the newest changes in the game has made it um, more applicable to max out your cards, but this is one of the side effects of one of the recent changes to the game, uh, rewards changes, right, um, is to uh, make uh, the users want to buy more cards. That's fine. That's the goal of, that's one of the goals he, that he set out to do most likely, right? That's fine. But I'm still saying, as a user, I don't necessarily have to jump on the bandwagon and just, uh, hey, he wants me to buy my, more cards, so I'm going to buy more cards. So I'm just trying to do it in a logical way, and I'm thinking about it, right? But in the past, I'll tell you the truth, I have thought about it when that big change went into play, and instead of maxing out my commons, what I did was I have bought a few. Um, primarily, uh, I bought Grandmaster Wraith. I also bought Lily Shield Paul and a couple other the nicer ones, right? Quick Devious um, that I was lacking. So I took a little bit of direction, and once again, I did not buy max level. I bought level three, which my summoners can use. So I'm just saying he has a good point, but you also have to consider your budget. Okay, he's looking at it from a big picture that down the road, you might as well start with max level while they're cheap. Okay so that down the road you can take an advantage of them okay but i'm just saying again that if you know down the road you're still not going to pay thousands of dollars to max out cards you might look at it a different way like i do okay, okay. so <clears throat> everybody's been talking about this week the big changes went in uh on patch day uh this previous tuesday and since then i've been keeping an eye on it watching my uh, bot play my account seeing where things were going. I didn't want to do a video the first couple days. I was sick, right? So um, I just kind of kept an eye on, uh, you know, the glint that was coming in and how I was feeling about the situation. Um, and the overall situation is, uh, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. Let's just say that, okay? There's a lot of people out there putting videos out or really on the bandwagon and love it. Um, I like certain parts of it and I think certain parts of it still need work. So let's get into it, okay? So. You can see now that my account is currently playing in Diamond 2, Borderline Diamond 1. I have no idea why my account is this high. This is the highest this account has ever played, uh, even when it was playing in Modern, which it is primary, uh, primarily a Chaos Legion deck. I mean, I do have some other uh, sprinkling of other cards in there, but it's primarily a Chaos Legion strong deck. Okay, and it, like I said earlier, we've talked about in the previous portion of this video, uh, I have level, uh, sorry, a motorcycle just went by. We can take a look at my summoners um, again, and you can, you can see what I'm talking about, right? Um, you know, uh, level six of my primary summoners, um, level three of some of the, let's just go ahead and reset. 
but you can see what I'm working with here. I have a level four Alric, but the highest I, I do my my Soulbound, uh, I, I actually did get a level seven recently, but that's gonna be my highest level summoner. The rest of them I'm working with are primarily level six and level three, okay? Um, and that's what I'm working with, which is essentially a max level gold deck, right? I have no idea why it is playing in Diamond 2, okay? Highest it's been. And we'll talk about my secondary account, which is also playing in Diamond 2 with silver level summoners, which got me scratching my head as well. So if you have any opinions on why this is happening, let me know in the comments. Either way, uh, we're in wild, and that's what we're talking about because Archmaid plays my uh, bot. And uh, my glint, you can see, I've got about 13,698. At this point, we have a little bit over a week left. Uh, I think I had figured it out, extrapolated it out, and I'm going to be somewhere around 20,000, 21,000 glint um, total, not including the season end uh, loot when we hit the end of season, okay? And that will give, when we check the shop, that will pretty much give me, uh, I will be in the neighborhood of being able to hit 10 elite draws, okay? Now, in the past, um, and that's not counting the end of season, okay? That's just talking about the daily, okay? A lot of discussion has been happening lately about, um, you know, you know, losing the daily chess and some people like the chess, some people didn't like it. I did like the chess, I didn't like portions, like I didn't like pulling so many potions and stuff like that. I did like opening daily chess, the randomality of it, the gambling factor, this and that. Um, and then, you know, some people uh, brought about the point, well, you know, only a certain amount of those chests had cards in it. That's true. Mine averaged, you know, on a daily basis, I was getting uh, gold or diamond chests. I was getting anywhere from five to seven, you know. Uh, well, I was getting about seven gold, and then when it crossed over into diamond, I was getting about five. And then I was getting like, uh, you know, uh, six, seven, eight cards in a day, you know, not counting other stuff I was getting. Um, and as you can see, if I go down to 10 chests, um, who knows? I mean, overall, I see a, a net decrease in the cards I'm going to get, okay? Uh, just on a season basis, okay? And then we can take a look at the end of the season. Okay, so I guess to not draw this out any further, my general opinion is, and you know, Matt has uh, did make a statement in Discord that said that they were looking at this, looking at the levels, taking in data, and going to be making decisions on that uh, going forward. He didn't say necessarily if they were going to for sure. Uh, you know, he doesn't like to paint himself into a corner, um, but he hint, uh, he said that they were thinking about making changes. To me, either the amount of glint we get on a daily basis per win needs to go up or the costs of the chests or, or the draws, sorry, need to go down. That's my general opinion about that. Now, uh, I did watch a very interesting discussion. Uh, it was Dwayne and Gathering the Magic. Um, and check out Dwayne's channel for that. It was recent, it was like yesterday he posted it. Um, a very interesting discussion that covered a couple of the other facets of this change. One of the things that they talked a lot about was um, the limited titles that are available that are the only thing that you can resell. And they went into uh, great detail about the numbers, about um, burning soulbound cards to be able to get these titles. And like the top level one has only had three sold. And then uh, if you click, uh, if you go into, um, let's see, let's go into the market and we're looking for the renowned There's one for sale and it's a thousand dollars. I encourage you to watch their video, um, so I'm not going to repeat everything they said. But the whole idea was that um, there's this idea behind currently selling off soulbound or burning soulbound cards to be able to obtain a title to sell it and make money. Okay, interesting point. Um, at this point in my game. I hadn't even really considered, I, I mean, I had considered them, but they're way off in the future for me, okay, as far as trying to get a title. Will they even be there by the time I get around to getting one? Probably not. 
Um, I'm not overall worried uh, about it. Um, does it, do they present a value? Yeah, there's some value behind them. You could grab one and if you're on the top end and you've already got your rewards cards um, maxed out and everything, uh, you're in, probably in a situation where you're just saving your Clint for the next set that comes out, might as well grab one, throw it on your land, what have you, resell it, make a little bit of money, uh, what have you. But personally, I'm in a situation where I will be considering two main things. Um, the master and elite, possibly veteran draws, as well as merits. <clears throat> because all these cards, I still am, am in a situation where I need to increase their level. Okay, so these uh, soulbound cards represent a value to me in being able to, especially the summoners, as we've talked about in this previous uh, portion of the episode, where my uh, main summoners are sitting, I'm finally getting to the point where some of my soulbound um, summoners are getting to the point where they're eclipsing those. So let's take a look at my own soulbounds. Uh, so one of them, two of them. Okay, three of them. So I've got three at level seven now. Uh, you know, fire, water, and dragon. So that's a great value. And me increasing these is basically, like Dwayne likes to say, time and attention put into the game, um, allowing me to strengthen uh, my summoners, which is the base. We've been talking about that from the previous uh, portion of the episode to increase upon uh, increase the, the overall strength of my deck without having to expend a ton of money, uh, which, um, you know, recently, instead of putting them into my rare summoners, I am putting them into uh, some of the uh, higher end summoners that I felt my, uh, my deck uh, lacked. So if we look at that, let's go here to legendaries. So these, uh, these three are the ones I've recently bought. And I do want to go ahead and <clears throat> pick up, sorry. I would like to pick up an Immortalis and an Astral Entity. Those are the two main ones I'm looking at. Possiblis, Possiblis would be nice as well. Um, all these are nice. All these have their play value. But my main point here is my money is going into them instead of necessarily um, maxing out my other summoners. So back to the main point about the new changes okay like i said i'm just repeating myself i feel that the glint or the cost needs to um be worked with and obviously it's easier for them to make changes start out low and adjust higher i see why they did it right then it's easier to give something to people mentally than it is to take that take that away from them okay so it's easier that and i can see why they did it that way um but um now i do want to switch over to a completely different situation and in this situation i've been working lately on my amount of sps staked because when originally the whole sps staking went into effect i was lacking okay um, the cost was high at that point. The cost of SBSs went down. So once again, it's a double-edged sword, right? Depending upon how you're looking at things, either you're trying to get out or you're looking at it like things are low, so why not buy? So lately, I've been increasing my bank of SPS, but in the new situation, I didn't expect my account to make it into Diamond 2 and cross over into Diamond 1. Last season, it crossed over into Champ. I was way down on boost. There's no way I can put that much money into everything into this game. They're just asking for you to just dump tons of money all at once. Okay, you need to buy more cards and you need to dump tons of money into SPS. I'm just saying, step back and look at your budget and think about how to do it economically for you. Now, like I was saying, let's go to my secondary account, which is playing with silver level summoners, what previously was silver, I guess it's still silver level summoners, but this account uh, generally has uh, overflow from my primary account, right? And we are looking at summoners, and this one primarily plays with gold. Uh, let's go owned. Um, <clears throat> but primarily plays with level four gold chaos uh, legion summoners, which I put on there specifically to get that extra bonus from gold and everything. Um, but it has a smattering of the uh, has been er earning the rewards cards and such, so those are helping out as well. But if we go back, we will see that this 
account is once again, for some reason, playing in Diamond 2. Why is a, somebody please, in the comments, tell me why a deck that is playing with level 4 rare summoners in Diamond 2? I don't know. But one of the byproducts of that change is you'll see that one of the weak parts of this account is that it has a low amount of SPS staked, just over 3,000, right? Haven't been throwing a lot of SPS on this. I put it on my primary account, right? And you'll see that this account, because it's been forced into Diamond 2, is only getting just over one boost. So it's getting hardly any glint whatsoever. Now, it, there will be a nice end of season right there, but as far as the regular glint on a daily basis, it's getting next to nothing. So I don't know what the answer is here. I keep my secondary account going uh, just because I like to get the rewards cards and I like to be in a second, uh, help out a second guild. I like, uh, I like doing my brawls. Um, I wasn't in necessarily to earn a huge amount of money. This, this secondary account never really drew a whole lot. In fact, the most I get out of this account is primarily playing in brawls, you know. Um, but I had extra cards and at the time, uh, you know, that's what I did, but it, now it's drawing hardly anything. So I know I'm going to get some flames, and if you're haters, go ahead and put it, in, uh, put it in the comments what you're thinking about what I'm saying. However, do it logically, okay? Uh, state your piece and why you think I'm right, why you think I'm wrong. Um, but I think, generally speaking, I like the idea of a shop, okay, if it would load. Okay, I like this whole idea. I think it needs a little bit of work. I think the cost going up exponentially by buying more packs maybe needs to be toned down a little bit, that cost increase. Um, and once again, overall, I think the cost of the actual draws needs to either come down or the amount of glint we get on a win-by-win -win basis goes up. Um, and I also want to call out uh, and say thanks to DJ Thistle, who made a comment on my recent live stream video. Uh, once again, I'll leave, the uh, leave that link in the show notes because it was a, a very uh, interesting uh, discussion this past weekend. If you're not aware, I do a live stream every Saturday, my Saturday morning stand-up. It occurs at 1130 Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, you can catch it. Runs for about an hour. Sometimes runs a little bit more. Sometimes we do giveaways. Uh, we like to change it up. We mostly talk about Splinterlands, but we do talk about a smattering of other uh, hive-based games, uh, and we talk about what's on uh, what's on everybody's mind. Either way, DJ Thistle said that what he would like to see is a rotating four cards on the reward shop uh, that are soul bound, and they just rotate in and out. OK, um, and obviously they would be at a premium because you're buying specific cards and maybe there's a limit. I don't know. But this goes back to what they were talking about, possibly adding specific cards to the shop and also referring to the thing that they had said that they want to rotate things in and out of the shop. So, you know, maybe maybe one of these titles sells out and then they rotate something else in or they rotate, like he said, four or five cards in. Maybe there's a limited amount. Once they're sold out, they're sold out. I don't know. Maybe there's a personal uh, limit. Maybe you can buy a certain amount of them, and then that's all you can buy. I don't know the specifics. I just know I like that idea. I've always liked the idea of having specific cards put in the shop so you don't have to do random. Maybe they're pricey. You know, Obviously, the offside to that would be that they're pricey. But either way, I thought it was worth mentioning. So shout out to DJ Thistle uh, about that idea. Either way... Um, so let me know in your comments how you're doing and what you think about the newest changes. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, where they go with this. Uh, either way, uh, I generally like the idea of the shop. I would be lying if I said I didn't miss the daily chess and rewards, uh, random chess. But I wouldn't be lying if I told you that I'm glad I won't be seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of potions when I don't need them. Either way, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. I appreciate you for dropping by. This has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.